G'day, let's have a look at what's inside this Milwaukee Rapid Charge Charger. So this is an M12 and an M18 charger, I can charge either one. So on the left side here you can have the smaller M12 batteries, and on the right here you can put the bigger M18 batteries. So this is rated for 6 amps at 18 volts, and at 4.5 amps at the 12 volts for the M12. It's actually quite a small unit. It's the only real form of indication for the charge. It's got these LEDs up the top, so they're multicolored. So you've got red and green, and they'll just flash in different order, depending on what, how the charge is going. And then you've just got the slit up here for the M18 batteries. So you can slide that in quite nice, and it'll take nice and big batteries there as well. And likewise, you've got the M12 batteries here. I just haven't got one handy. The whole thing is just a plastic case made out of two parts. We've got the top parts, which is that classic Milwaukee red, and then the bottom is just a nice black case. The really cool thing that I actually noticed before on these is you've got the mounting holes on the back, so if you want to mount this onto a wall, you just put a screw into the wall and then hang this onto it. But it's got two points, so to hold it a lot more securely. And the really nice thing is you can see it here. It, just get the angle right. So it says four inches or 102 millimeters and it's got it between this distance here and this distance here. So that just means it, it shows you what the distance is here. So you don't have to go measuring it, you just look at it and then put one hole in and then put another one four inches lower and then you've got the sweet spot for this. It's got these really nice extra raised feet here as well and this extra ribbing here. So when this does sit on a wall or even on a flat surface, it sits really nice and smooth. That's pretty much it on the outside. It's got uh, an extension, well, a cable here. And we just got a ferrite in there, so that's just going to be choking um, any of that noise that comes through the power lines or through this long cable. It just seems to be held together by a few Torx screws on the bottom, so let's just dig straight in. Alright, so pulling off that top clamshell, it's really sturdy, moulded together very nice. And we can see a lot of ventilation bits, so the way they've done this on the inside is we've got these little L channels. So through here, air can come in, come out the side, go through it and then exit on the top. So the, the hot air will exit on the top of the charger, and while that's happening, it'll pull in cooler, fresh air on the sides of the charger. And actually on the bottom case, we've got a bunch of that sort of vented areas here as well, all the way around. So there's plenty of areas for fresh cold air to enter in on the bottom, and then we just have that cold one exit out on the side. But that's pretty much it. The only other thing we've got is, is a, there is a little PCB here that just has a couple of LEDs on top that will just signal this, so that they just have a green and a red LED on the side. And then we just have this ribbon cable that plugs into the main board that actually controls those LEDs. All right, there's a few more screws holding the board together, so we'll take that whole thing out and then have a good look at it. Okay, that comes off really easy with just those four screws holding it together. And then we've just got that bottom clamshell of that case with a couple of high standoffs here and another one there, which just hold in these various brackets. So that one here actually holds in this floating PCB, and that's the attachment for the M12. And then that other one down here holds this battery terminal here that goes onto the M18 batteries. Not exactly sure what this is, but I would say this is some sort of an insulation. Let's see if we can get that to focus a bit better. That's some sort of an insulation pad because it sits right on the side of where the screw goes in. So if you put that screw in, on the other side, you've just got these little capacitors here and the transformer as well. You really don't want to be shorting any of that into wherever that goes. So my guess would be that that's just an insulation pad. It's interesting. It's only at the top and there's not one on the bottom, but maybe they're just, yeah. So there's just actually nothing on the bottom under that. So even if you come through on the bottom with the screw, it can't actually touch anything. So cost saving measure, they just put it on top and not on both. So I'll put that aside and then we've got the actual board itself. Cool, so let's have a look. Let's just start off with where the power comes in. So we've got the 240 volts coming in. This is a 240 model. So we've got that coming in 
There's a couple of little inductors there that's just going to be for noise suppression. And then further here, we've got a common mode choke just under all of this elastic. That looks like a bridge. Yeah, so we come in, so that looks like a bridge rectifier in there as well. I'll grab a screwdriver and actually point this out a little bit more. It is very hard to see some of these components because they've actually done a really good job coating it with all of this elastic. So that's just there for these bigger through hole components so they don't move around as easy. There you go, so that's focused. So we've got the power coming in there, a couple little capacitors. These here are the inductors, so they'll just be doing filtering. Then we've got a common mode choke there as well, as well as that's probably a little capacitor here as well. Can't really see it all that clearly, but it seems to be between the two phases. And then we go through that bridge rectifier. So that bridge rectifier is basically there to, to convert the AC to DC. So it will have two pins on the AC side, which is that center side here, and then the outside here will be DC side. So that DC then goes straight to a really big capacitor. So I can't actually see the value on it just in here. So it's a 100 microfarad, 400 volt capacitor. So that's a very high voltage on this side then, and then it, that just gets channeled through a little bit further. And then we're pretty much just going to hit a couple of diodes and then get into the main transformer. So this main transformer will receive DC most likely on the few hundred volts. So the voltage will be slightly stepped up just because of the way the bridge rectifier works and it combines those phases together. We'll have a few hundred volts coming into the primary side of the transformer, which will be on this side here. And then that transformer will be stepping it down onto the secondary side. So I'm not sure exactly what voltage that'll step it down to, but I would assume maybe something around the 20 volts because the M18, so the 18 volt platform will be charged at 19, 20 volts, so a little bit higher. So this transformer here would, let's just call it about 20 volts, would step that down to 20 volts. So the really neat thing to see there is we've got these holes here. And that's sort of where the division in the PCB is. So to the left, we've got the high voltage side. And then to the right, we've got the low voltage side. The only connection between these two sides is there's a couple of little capacitors here. The transformer, which obviously does the actual stepping down of the voltage. And then just in here, these two black little chips, these guys are going to be optocouplers. So what that is, is on one side, it's going to be basically an LED, and then on the other side, it's going to be a photoresistor. So it's going to be picking up the signal from that LED. So the reason that's done is, is that's just going to completely isolate the high voltage side and the low voltage side. There's actually no physical connection within these two components. There's just light shooting from one side to the other. So there's two of them. I don't know exactly what they are for, but my guess would be they would be for voltage and current monitoring of the transformer or of the actual high voltage side. So the microcontroller would be on the low voltage side here, but it would need to monitor the voltage and the current going on in the high voltage side. So that's most likely what that's going to be there for. On the DC side, we can see a couple of transistors there. So there's actually four of them. So these guys are most likely going to be used for the actual switching. So the microcontroller, which is probably going to be this here, is actually going to be controlling the charging, but it's got nowhere near enough bandwidth within it to actually just turn that power straight on and off to go to battery. So what this will do is it will send a small signal onto the transistors, and then these transistors will turn on and off and just act as really big switches to actually send all of that power then through these other tracks and onto the contacts here for the batteries. And my best guess would be there's four of them because we're going to have two per um, per voltage or per different battery type. And then also kind of on that DC side, what, what I sort of alluded to, we've got the actual microcontroller here. That there's just going to be another little IC chip, maybe just another voltage regulator or operational amplifier because we're going to have a higher voltage on probably this area here but then these microcontrollers are going to work at either 3.3 or 5 volts so something else here is going to have to convert that voltage down a little bit lower so there are actually a couple little voltage regulators just there but my guess would be that that there is an operational amplifier that actually steps that voltage down again for the microcontroller and that little control circuit to work then we just have a whole bunch of little capacitors, resistors, a few little diodes, um, just as little supporting components for these bigger chips. That's pretty much it on this side. It's bringing up for another close up there. It is really nice. The whole thing is conformally coated on this side. So 
you can probably see that reflection of those lights. Everything is very shiny, so this will have a really nice coating on it. All right, we can have a look at those actual components on this side. So that little connector there just connects to this plug here, and then that just goes over to those LEDs. So that's just going to be simple low voltage dumb LED um, output that just turns them on and off. We just got a whole bunch of capacitors really on this side. That's pretty much all that we can see is there's a few smaller capacitors there and a few beefier ones up here, a big resistor. And then we're probably going to have another little controller or, or a little transistor there to actually turn on those char uh, that charging. I think that might even be an, an actual MOSFET to just switch that on and off, uh, similar to these guys back here. That's pretty much all that we've got on that low voltage side. We're just going to have again these different capacitors to power the different um, the different battery types. There's going to be two different circuits within it. One's going to have that slightly higher voltage for the 18 volt battery and then the 12 volt battery will be charged at probably 13 14 volts depending on how how much this actually or how this charging protocol works with the rapid charger because it's going to be pumping a lot of current into it at a slightly higher voltage than what the battery is actually um, the nominal voltage of the battery so on all the components or all the small components are mounted on, on this side here and then on, on the top we've just got all the through through hole components there so it's interesting what they've done. This is kind of kind of looks really cool, I guess. Probably see it this way. We've got a little plus and a minus there. So that's just for these two standoffs here to actually slide in. So you can show that that just slides in through that PCB, sticks up, and then it holds this sort of floating PCB in place really nicely. So I'm not sure why they've chosen that specific plus and I guess little minus design. But I'm sure it obviously does the job since that's what they've done. So yeah, that'll just hold this this PCB together. This board doesn't really have anything in it except for just those arrangements of those terminals there. That plugs into the battery. So we've got the main main terminals here for charging, and then we've got those three smaller terminals there, and they're just going to be communicating with the battery. So whatever's actually in the battery, there might be a digital protocol, or it might just be measuring maybe a thermistor or some sort of temperature sensing of the battery, so it can know if that gets too hot, and then either limit the charging or turn it off completely. Uh, the other thing, we've got these pressed. This is this would have been stamped out of sheet metal. This is aluminium. That's the heatsink there for the DC side, so for the lower voltage side. And then likewise, we've got a big heatsink on the high voltage side as well, or on the AC side as well, um, as a little component mounted to it, so U3. So that could also just be the little controller. There's actually a lot of different bits going to it, so it corresponds to these these little terminals here on the other side so that that's probably just going to be a little controller as well to switch that voltage on and off so that's it it's it's really nice board the whole thing again is coated in elastic a lot of the bigger components so i guess even here a lot of these bigger components that stick up just have a really nice dab of elastic all over them which will just hold them in place and prevent as this gets you know thrown around vibrated whatever this will just hold those components on the board really well so absorb some of that vibration and prevent any physical movement which would then wear out the mechanical connections and that would weaken the actual electrical connections to the board and both sides are conformally coated so this whole side has that shiny well, i'm sure you can see on, on the screen reflecting from those lights that i've got it's all just coated really nicely so really really well done by milwaukee I mean, these are still quite expensive for what it is. It's just a PCB with a whole bunch of components, but I'm sure they use fairly good quality components to last quite a while. And we've got a lot of filtering and we've got the big capacitors there, which is really nice to see because that's going to provide a really smooth voltage. The capacitors will just be filtering out any voltage ripples or any surges within that as well. So I'll bring it up for another quick look, but that's pretty much it. There we go. So I hope you enjoyed the videos. Give it a thumbs up if you did. If you want to see more of this sort of stuff, consider subscribing. And as always, have a great day.